Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our third session here on the Bhagavad Gita. Tonight we're going to give something of an overview of the topics which are brought up here in the Bhagavad Gita. We'll be all right, so go ahead. Why should we study the Bhagavad Gita? This is a good question to ask people. We ask even ourselves, why am I studying this Bhagavad Gita? So, go ahead. Here, we, we, we want you, if, you're, if you have a question about this, why study Bhagavad Gita, we have to understand the difference between human life and animal life. And so there's a quotation given here from the Mahabharata and talking about that animals, they eat, sleep, make and defend. Human beings are meant to do more than that. They're meant to inquire about the absolute truth. Otherwise, they're just like animals. Go ahead. All right. Problems of life. We have to understand in, a, in, in this material world, there are many problems. At birth, there are problems. It's not easy to give birth to children. Go ahead. Then death is another problem. We all, we're go all going to die one day. Nobody can escape death. So that's another problem. Go ahead. Old age. If we live, if we live long enough, we become old. People, some people die while they're still young. But old age is not very pleasant. There's so many troubles come with old age. Go ahead. And disease. We know how much the whole world is affected by disease at this time. 
รารู้ว่าอย่างโดยเฉพาะสังคมปัจจุบันเลยใช่ไหมที่เรามีปัญหามากกับเรื่องโรค So these are the four miseries of life: birth, old age, disease, and death. And they're there for all living entities. Go ahead. Right now, we're going to look at. Three more miseries. We spoke about four miseries. There's three more miseries. Miseries, first of all, caused by one, our mind. It's very important to keep the mind peaceful. So much disease is caused because the mind is not peaceful. มีความจำเป็นอย่างยิ่งที่เราจะต้องทำให้จิตใจของเราเนี่ยมีความสงบเพราะไม่งั้นเนี่ยมันจะสามารถสร้างปัญหาให้เราได้เยอะมากสร้างโรคด้วย Go ahead and then miseries caused by other living beings แล้วก็ความทุกข์ที่สร้างโดยสิ่งมีชีวิตอื่นๆ Not just people give us problems. So many, like so many animals can give us problems. So many mosquitoes can give us problems. Viruses can give us problems. ในสิ่งมีชีวิตอื่นอาจจะไม่ใช่คนอย่างเดียวนะคะที่จะให้ความทุกข์กับเราอาจจะเป็นยุงอาจจะเป็นมดอาจจะเป็นมแมลงหรืออะไรเงี้ยค่ะคือหมายถึงทุกสิ่งมีชีวิตสิ่งมีชีวิตอื่น Go ahead. And here. Miseries caused by natural calamities. You can see some building collapse, maybe earthquake or something like that causes disaster. But remember, about 20 years ago, there was a big tsunami in Thailand. Many people died. So, three more miseries are there. Go ahead. So. We want. We ask you to understand the importance of human life. We have to understand the difference between the human being and an animal. So, so both the human being and the animal, they're both eating and sleeping and mating and defending. But human life is there's some difference here between the animals. That the the difference is in human life we have a greater intelligence and we can discriminate. We can make a distinction between good and bad, and we can inquire. Into the cause of suffering and the destination of life. Where are we going after death? อะไรเงี้ยได้การค้นหาว่าทําไมเราถึงมีความทุกข์แล้วก็จุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุดของชีวิตเนี่ยคืออะไร Now animals they also have intelligence, but their intelligence is only used for eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. ความจริงสัตว์เนี่ยก็มีปัญญาเหมือนกันแต่ว่าปัญญาของเขาเนี่ยจะถูกใช้ไปเพื่อการกินนอนร่วมเพศป้องกันตัวอย่างเดียว
Human being is meant to use their intelligence to understand about the goal of life. And it, it begins when we ask, who am I? Why am I suffering? That's a human being. If, if, if we don't inquire like that, then we're no different from the animal. We are two-legged animals. Go ahead. So, how to get knowledge? We need to get this knowledge. Where do we get knowledge? We learn from Bhagavad Gita how to get knowledge. Go ahead. We don't get knowledge from our own senses. Our senses are imperfect. We are often in illusion. We, we make mistakes and we cheat. So we are not a good source of knowledge. We don't get good knowledge from our own self. Go ahead. So, you want to get knowledge? We give the example. You have to hear from an authority. We give the example. Just like the child wants to know who is his father. He can go to so many men and ask, Are you my father? Are you my father? Are you my father? It may take him a long time. He may never find his father. But if he goes to his mother, mother can immediately tell him who is his father. So the same way, we want to get knowledge, we have to go to the disciplic succession, which gives the knowledge from the scriptures. Go ahead. Okay. So we say the Vedas, the infallible Vedas, means the Vedas are never wrong. Everything stated in the Vedas is perfect knowledge. Vedas are just like the mother. The mother knows who the father is. She can tell who is the father of her child. So the same way the Vedas give us perfect knowledge. So we mentioned here there were predictions made 5,000 years ago. They predicted how in the future Lord Buddha would appear and he would stop the people from killing all the animals. So the Vedas give perfect knowledge. They explain about the development of the child in the womb from birth. 
แล้วให้ความรู้เกี่ยวกับแม้แต่การเกิดของเด็กการเจริญเติบโตของเด็กในคันมันดา Explain about how plants have life. Also, they also have consciousness. แล้วก็อธิบายเกี่ยวกับต้นไม้สิ่งมีพืชว่าความจริงพวกเขาก็มีวิญญาณมีชีวิตเหมือนกันเขาก็มีการเติบโต And how they are living entities even in the fire. แล้วก็เกี่ยวกับสิ่งมีชีวิตอื่นแม้แต่สิ่งมีชีวิตที่อยู่ในไฟ So we get a lot of scientific information from the Vedas. เราก็จะได้รับความรู้มากมายนะคะในเชิงวิทยาศาสตร์จากพระเวทด้วย So we say the Vedas is perfect knowledge. เพราะฉะนั้นเราก็จะบอกได้เลยว่าความรู้ที่ได้จากพระเวทเป็นความรู้ที่สมบูรณ์ Go ahead. So Bhagavad Gita is Vedic knowledge. Bhagavad Gita is sometimes called Gita Upanishad. It means it's the essence of the Upanishads, and the Upanishads is part of the Vedas. Bhagavad Gita, นะคะก็ถือว่าเป็นอุปนิชัดค่ะอุปนิชัดเนี่ยก็เป็นเศษเป็นส่วนหนึ่งของพระเวท So there are five subjects in the Bhagavad Gita explained. ในพระวจิตาเนี่ยจะอธิบายถึงห้าหัวข้อหลักๆ You have the Ishwara, it means the supreme controller or the god. Uh, หัวข้อแรกเนี่ยจะพูดถึง Ishwara หรือว่าบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดผู้ควบคุมสูงสุดนะก็คือพระเจ้า And then we have the Jiva, means the living entities. All of us, we are Jivas. All different forms of life, but we are all Jivas. We are all Jivas. We are meant to be controlled by God. And then there's prakriti, the material nature, which comes in three qualities: goodness, passion, and ignorance. Then time is also explained in Bhagavad Gita. Time is eternal. It's also an energy of Krishna. And then the final quality explained in Bhagavad Gita is karma, which means the activities performed and the reactions which we get from other activities. So five items. Only karma is. Not eternal. All the others are all eternal. Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, and Kala. They're all eternal. But karma, that's not eternal. It can be changed. Karma, yeah. ไม่ไม่ถาวรคือสามคือมีการเปลี่ยนแปลงได้ก็ฮะโอเคนั่น18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita divided into three parts the first six chapters describe karma yoga a niskam karma and jnana yoga and a stanga yoga we talked about that yesterday the yoga ladder พอวัดที่ตาสิบแปดบทนะคะพอวัดที่ตาจะมีสิบแปดบทแล้วก็จะแบ่งเป็นสามส่วนส่วนแรกเนี่ยก็เป็นหกบทแรกนะคะก็คือจะเป็นเกี่ยวกับโยคะต่างๆที่เราเรียนไปแล้วเมื่อวานนะคะเป็นขั้นบันไดของโยคะ And then the second six chapters chapter seven up to chapter twelve they're all discussing bhakti yoga แล้วก็ในส่วนที่สองเนี่ยก็จะเป็นตั้งแต่บทที่เจ็ดถึงบทที่สิบสองเนี่ยก็จะอธิบายถึงถึงบัคติโยกา And the last six chapters, chapter thirteen up to chapter eighteen, they're discussing Gyana Yoga, 
and giving the final chapter, chapter 18, is a summary of the whole Bhagavad Gita. So which, which section is the most important? Chaya, do you know? Bhakti Yoga Guru. Yes, Bhakti Yoga, you're right. Bhakti Yoga is the most important. Some people think because Jnana Yoga comes at the end, it's the most important. But no, it's a bit in the middle which is the most important. <laughs> Prabhupada explains, say, just like you get a sandwich, so you get bread on the outside and you put the good thing in the middle. So the bhakti is like that good thing in the middle and the outside parts, the, the karma yoga and the jnana yoga, they are like the covering of the bhakti yoga. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so the science of the soul. Jiva, go ahead. Right, here's the important verse about the soul, the change of the body. As the body changes, you see in the picture from the young child, the body's growing to the young boy, then the boy becomes a man, and then the man becomes the old man, and one day the old man dies. And he leaves the body, he'll take another body. So Bhagavad Gita teaches us about reincarnation. The body is not eternal, but the soul is eternal. The body is going to die, but the soul never dies. But we change the body, we change the body, just like we change the dress. So we change the body. So the first thing in Bhagavad Gita is to understand who am I? I am not the body, I am a soul and I live in, in a body but I'm not the body. Just like you live in a house, you don't become the house, you live in the house, but you're different from the house. The same way, we live in the body, but we're not the body, we're all souls. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the knowledge of the soul. What is the soul? We're talking about the soul. You have to understand the nature of the soul. First thing is indestructible. It doesn't die. It cannot be cut by weapons. It cannot be burned. The second thing, soul is individual. I'm a soul, you're a soul. We're different souls. So 
Some, t some people are foolish, they think there's the soul in the animal and the soul in the tree is different from the soul in the person, but no, it's the same soul, just a different body. The nature of the soul, Satchit Ananda, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. And then it's situated in the heart of every living entity, in the heart. Just like the tree, the tree has roots. The roots is like the heart of the tree. So the soul is there in the root. Then the soul is eternal, it never dies, and it changes bodies. We take different bodies. It's very small and it's very hard to understand beyond the power of our mind and senses. Okay, go ahead. All right. What about Ishwara, the Supreme? I have to understand there is a Supreme Being behind the universe. So that who is the Supreme? He is the cause of everything. He's the source of everything. He's the controller. He's a proprietor, he's an enjoyer. And he is Bhagavan, he has all the opulences, wealth, fame, knowledge, beauty, strength, renunciation. Some people don't believe in God. They think everything just comes by chance. They're not very intelligent. They don't understand there's a person behind this world. You just have to look carefully, you have to think and understand that this world is not just by chance. There's a, there's a plan, there's a controller, there's a person with intelligence behind it. Go ahead. So is that is that person God? Is he personal or is he impersonal? Means is he a person or is he just some energy, light, some energy or light like that? Some people think God is just some light, some energy. You have to understand God is everything. He's light, he's energy, and he's a person, he's everything. So some people, they only think of God as being energy or light, they know the Brahman. And some people, they think of God as in the heart of everyone. That's called the Paramatma. 
But other people, they understand that God is a person. He's not only in the heart of everyone and he's not only energy, but he's outside of everything and he's a person and he has his own abode, his own kingdom. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hare Krishna. Okay, can you share my I'll do if you let me okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So we were we want to we want you to understand how Krishna is supreme. So there is evidence of this. Here's a quotation from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter ten, that verse number eight. Krishna said, I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything comes from me. So Krishna himself is saying like that in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's, there are some different pictures of Krishna, different forms. These are Vishnu, Narayan, how he performs the work of creation. And then you see the universal form. Krishna showed the Vishwarup, the universal form to Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 11. He wants Arjuna to understand. He wants not only Arjuna, he wants all of us to understand how everything in this world is this energy. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm. Arjuna, when Arjuna saw the universal form, then he understood Krishna's position. And he said to Krishna, you're the Supreme, you're the Supreme Brahman. Like 
And Krishna, Krishna showed you the different forms. He showed his universal form, then he showed his forearm form, and then he showed his two-arm form. So all of these different forms, they are all within Krishna. The, the original form is Krishna, two arms. Go ahead. Lord Krishna's appearance and activities described in the Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter. And it said if you can just understand about Krishna's birth and activities, how they are transcendental, then you never have to take birth again in the material world. เราก็ได้เอ่ออธิบายเกี่ยวกับเอ่อการปรากฏถึงพระองค์ได้ Go ahead. Right. Okay. So there's a picture at the birth of Lord Krishna. Krishna appeared first in his forearm form before Vasudeva and Devaki. And then at their request he changed himself into the form of a small baby. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the Abhishek of Lord Krishna. This is a bathing for the child, a special bathing. We do this, pro we have this festival where we bathe Krishna, we bathe the deity of Krishna every year on his birthday, on Janmashtami. It's a big festival. Okay, and here's a picture of Krishna's childhood pastimes. Krishna's famous, he's very fond of butter, and sometimes he would be known to steal the butter. And so people often show pictures like this of Krishna with his brother Balaram and they're stealing the butter. Go ahead. Krishna and Balaram taking the cows in the forests of Vrindavan. Krishna, Krishna grew up in Vrindavan, in the village of Vrindavan, and there's many temples there today in Vrindavan. Devotees often go there and visit the temples. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lord Krishna, different pastimes of Lord Krishna, which are all described in relation to the life of Krishna. How Krishna taught lessons to even great demigods like Brahma and Shiva. They were all taught by Lord Krishna to understand how Krishna is supreme above far above the position of Brahma and Shiva and Indra, all of these, they're they're all servants of Krishna. So here's this is Brahma Vimohan Lila. Lord Krishna put Brahma into illusion. And the same way, he put, Lord Krishna also put Lord Shiva into illusion. Okay, 
แล้วก็จะมีลีลาที่กริชนาทำไปพาสิวายอยู่ในความลมอะไรอย่างนี้ด้วย Go ahead Lord Krishna with his gopis the gopis of Vrindavan their famous devotees of Lord Krishna and they would often take a boat across the Yamuna the Yamuna river there in Vrindavan Go ahead. Lord Balaram and Mother Yashoda decorating Lord Krishna. They like to dress Krishna just like the mother dresses her child. And big brother Balaram, he's also dressing younger brother Krishna. Go ahead. Okay, then Krishna. Has a, there's a special festival which takes place every year, where Lord Krishna is placed on a swing along with his consort Radharani, and they enjoy the cool air and on as they ride on the swing. ก็เป็นลีลาการนั่งชิงช้านะคะของราดาและมิชนาซึ่งปัจจุบันเนี่ยเราก็มีการเฉลิมฉลองเทศกาลนี้เช่นกัน Go ahead Lord Krishna's water pastimes bathing in the Yamuna in the very hot summer you get very nice cool and refreshed by bathing in the Yamuna แล้วก็นี่ก็เป็นตอนที่กิชนาเนี่ยอาบน้ำที่แม่น้ำยมุนาเนี่ยเป็นลีลา Go ahead then Krishna's Rasa Lila. Krishna is very fond of dancing, and all the gopis, all the young ladies, they also dance with Krishna and they enjoy. Go ahead. Okay. So here's a quote from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter seven. Some people. They worship other gods. They don't worship Krishna. They worship lesser gods. They're called demigods, and they worship these people to get material benefits, to get temporary benefits. And they say, "Bhagwan, in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagwan Gita, Chapter Seven, Sloka Twenty Three, says that people who have a little money, they will worship the gods of the Yamunas to get benefits from the material world. They will worship the gods of the Yamunas to get benefits from the material world." Yeah, people want material benefits, like they want good health, or they want material success, prosperity. Sometimes they want more opulence of the material world. Sometimes they want more children. They want a better family life. <laughs> So all of these things are very temporary. They're taken away at death. So only foolish people will worship to get things which are temporary. We should want to get eternal benefit. Of course, but these material things are given by the grace of Krishna. Go ahead. All right. Now we're talking about material nature, the prakriti. There's two kinds of prakriti. There's the, the living entities. And there's also the inanimate prakriti, the material objects. So all this material energy is Krishna's energy; it's under His control. Go ahead. Right. Let's go back. The three modes of material nature. Yes, you can see here. Here is above on the top. We see Lord Krishna, 
And then below Krishna we have the different demigods and the demigods are controlling us. We are like the puppets, we are controlled by the demigods. Go ahead. Go ahead. So there are three, three, degree, three levels of material nature. There's the goodness, passion and ignorance. Passion and ignorance are very bad. We want to come to goodness. This material world is a lot of passion and the passion often goes to ignorance. But if you learn the proper process, you can change from passion to goodness. Bhagavad Gita helps us to come up to goodness. Go ahead. Then time. Time is described as God's, God's energy. And it's very powerful. Nobody can overcome time. Time causes the destruction of everything. Go ahead. And then karma. Karma means ac activities, reactions we get from our activities. So we have to understand there's a law of karma. The law of karma is for action you get a reaction. If you do good, you get good results. If you do bad, you get bad results, your bad reaction. If you plant melons, you will harvest melons. And if you plant beans, you will harvest beans. And so we have to be very careful how we act, what we do. Go ahead. So there are three different kinds of karma. First of all, there's karma which is according to the scriptures. When you act according to the scriptures, then you get good results. But when we do acts which are against the scripture, that is vikarma, and that brings us sinful reactions, causes us suffering. And then there's akarma. When you do bhakti yoga, you don't get any reaction. So kar karma and vikarma will keep you in the material world. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. 
we don't have time. So, life is a preparation, death is the examination. Go ahead. Right, the final exam at the time of death will come. Where are we? What is our, where is our consciousness? It will determine where we go in our next life. So this is the science of yoga. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Here you see somebody doing yoga, twist the body, keep good health, live a long time. Go ahead. Some people do yoga, meditation, some try to get some other powers. Go ahead. So what is actually yoga? Yoga means to connect. Means you have to become, you have to connect with love, with actions, consciousness, connect to the Supreme. So Bhagavad Gita Krishna said, you must become a yogi. Go ahead. So different types of yoga, right? Human being, some people, they follow the rules and some people don't follow the rules. The people who follow the rules are the yogis. They may be a karma yogi, jnana yogi, astanga yogi or a bhakti yogi. ก็คือสิ่งมีอันนี้เป็นระดับต่างๆของโยโยกะนะคะก็คือสิ่งมีชีวิตใช่มั้ยคะต่อมาเนี่ยก็แบ่งออกเป็นสองประเภทก็คือ
ส่วนที่สองก็คือหนังสือนั่นเองนะคะนั่นหมายความว่าเราเนี่ยควรที่จะอ่านหนังสือหนังสือที่เราควรเริ่มในการอ่านก็คือหนังสือมาก่อนคิดตาหลังจากนั้นก็หนังสืออื่น And then the third thing we have to do the chanting we have to do chanting we have to chant the names chant the mantras we chant the slokas แล้วก็ในส่วนที่สามเนี่ยก็จะเป็นในส่วนของการสวดมนต์นะคะ chanting นั่นเองก็คือ chant ในบทมนต์นะคะ chant เป็นบาจารย์ chant เป็นสโล And then the diet we should eat food offered to Krishna Krishna prasad แล้วก็ดีนะคะก็คือหมายถึงการกินนั่นเองก็คือควรรับประทานอาหารที่เป็นประสาทดังที่ถวายให้กับคริสเตียน So we try to give many people Krishna prasad เราพยายามนะคะให้หลายสิ่งหลายอย่างกับให้คริสเตียนประสาทกับผู้คน So there for, that was four things to do then there's four things you shouldn't do มันเป็นสี่สิ่งที่เราควรที่จะทำแต่มันก็มีอีกสี่อย่างที่เราไม่ควรที่จะทำ First thing is should not eat meat or fish or egg. ข้อแรกเนี่ยที่เราไม่ควรที่จะทำก็คือการรับประทานเนื้อสัตว์ไม่ควรรับประทานเนื้อสัตว์ไข่ปลาทุกชนิด Because that will take away mercy from all people. เราถ้าเกิดเราท้าเช่นนั้นเนี่ยมันจะทำให้เสาหลักแห่งความเมตตาเนี่ยจะหายจะ You cannot be merciful if you're a meat eater. เพราะว่าผู้ที่กินเนื้อสัตว์เนี่ยเขาจะไม่มีเมตตา And no gambling, because gambling will start to cheat. We won't be truthful. Then, number three, no illicit sex, because illicit sex destroys cleanliness and purity. ไม่สำสอนทางเพศนั่นเองเพราะว่าถ้าถ้าผิดเรื่องเพศเนี่ยจะทำให้เราเนี่ยไม่มีความสะอาดหรือว่าความบริสุทธิ์ Of course people can get married and have a family that's nice แต่ถ้าเกิดเรื่องเพศถ้าเกิดว่าผู้คนเนี่ยแต่งงานกันแล้วก็มีครอบครัวมีลูกเนี่ยอันนั้นไม่ผิด And then fourth thing no intoxication because intoxication stops our austerity แล้วก็ข้อที่สี่ก็คือไม่ไม่เสพสิ่งเสพติดพอเสพสิ่งเสพติดเนี่ยมันจะทำให้ไม่มีความสมถะ We should be humble เราควรที่จะท่อมตน And then to practice the Bhagavad Gita go ahead we should we should have an altar just like in this picture here you can see you make an altar in your home And then, when you cook food, you offer the food on the altar. แล้วเราควรที่จะมีหิ้งพระแบบนี้นะคะเพราะว่าเวลาเราทำกับข้าวแล้วเนี่ยเราก็จะสามารถถวายที่หิ้งได้ Okay. So here's the, at the end, Shankaracharya, a great saint from a thousand years ago, he wrote verses about the glorifying the Bhagavad Gita. นี่นะคะก็เป็นสังฆาท่านเนี่ยได้เขียนสรรเสริญพระกวัตกีตาไว้ He said the Bhagavad Gita is the essence of the Upanishads บอกไว้ว่าพระกวัตกีตาเนี่ยเป็นศาสตร์สำคัญของอุปนิชัด And he said Bhagavad Gita is just like a cow and Krishna is like a cowherd boy พระกวัตกีตาเนี่ยเหมือนกับวัวแล้วก็คริสต์นาเนี่ยเหมือนกับลูกวัว And Partha meaning Arjuna he's like a calf แล้วก็ Partha เนี่ยหรือ Arjuna เนี่ยเปรียบเสมือนกับลูกวัวเมื่อกี้คริสต์นาเนี่ยเปรียบเสมือนกับผู้เลี้ยงวัว So when you bring the calf then the cow will give the milk and the milk will be drunk the milk is the nectar from the Gita and is drunk by all the saintly men and the, the intelligent people they will drink the nectar of Bhagavad Gita ตอนนี้เนี่ยก็ให้คำเปรียบเทียบไว้นะคะเหมือนกับพระวัตถิตาเนี่ยก็เปรียบเสมือนกับวัวนะคะแล้วก็นักปราชญ์ทั้งหลายเนี่ยที่ไปมาดื่มนมวัวก็คือดื่มน้ำทิพย์จากพระวัตถิตาก็คือหมายถึงผู้ที่มีโอกาสได้มาอ่าน And then he wrote another verse also. He said, "Let there be only one book, 
He said, Ekam Shastram, Devaki Putra Gitam. He said, the Bhagavad Gita, it's the only book we need. We don't need any other book. And we only need one God, the son of Devaki, Lord Krishna. And we only need one mantra, the name of the Lord. And we only need one occupation that, to work for the service of the Lord. So this is the glorification of the Bhagavad Gita, Gita Mahatmya. Okay, so I, so I went quite fast, but I just wanted to cover everything. There are many more things we could teach you that we don't have time today, but we have, you know, many other classes, opportunities. We invite all of you to come for other classes. Actually, tomorrow, tomorrow night, we have what's called safari. And for, uh, there's an opportunity for you to join, also on Zoom. You can come on safari with devotees. We're going to go to South India, and we're going to visit the holy places in South India. And then on Saturday we're going to Jagannath Puri, which is a very holy place in India, and you'll see the places there in Jagannath Puri. And, and then on Sunday we're going to South America and you'll see the different spiritual ashrams there in South America and you'll meet some of the people there who are practicing yoga there. So that's uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 6 o'clock till 8 o'clock and we'll give you the connection, the Zoom link, you can join. Okay, are there any questions? Hare Krishna. Can I can you hear me? Do you have a question? Yes, Gurudev, it's me, Yogi Devada. Do you have a question? Yes, Gurudev. These examinable obeisances. Gurudev, I'm really confused about this point. Uh, Prakriti, you counted as one of the eternal energies, but doesn't the Prakriti also get destroyed. Its destruction is bound to be there, like one of the quotes read. So I'm I'm a bit confused. How is it considered to be eternal if it's supposed to be destroyed? Well, you have to understand that it appears for some time, and then it, for some time then there's, it, it maintains, and then it's destroyed. But although it's destroyed, the elements are still there, they just undergo some transformation. Just like you will see clouds in the sky. Sometimes you will see the clouds in the sky, and sometimes there's no clouds in the sky. Where do they go? Where do they go? 
แล้วบางครั้งเราจะไม่เห็นมุมแม่บนท้องฟ้าเอาไปไหนเพราะมุมแม่ไปไหน So the elements of the material nature, they for some time they're manifest, and other times then they may not be manifest. They may enter into the body of Mahavishnu, and then again it all comes out from the body of Mahavishnu when there's creation again. Ah, ก็เหมือนกันนะคะปรากฏการณ์เนี่ยก็บางครั้งในเวลาจบลงเนี่ยเขาจะเข้าไปในร่างของมหาวิชโนนะคะแล้วก็พอปรากฏสร้างปรากฏการณ์ในครั้งนึงเขาก็จะออกมาซึ่งนั้นเนี่ยมันไม่ได้หมายความว่าเขาไม่มีอยู่เขามีอยู่แต่เขาแค่หายไปช่วง so material nature prakriti is like that that sometimes it's manifest and other times it's not manifest but it's always existing Is that clear, Yogi? Yeah, Gurudev. So we could say it's like us only, basically, like the jivatma, part and parcels of the Lord. So the prakriti is also part of the Lord, basically. Is that how we can say? Well, there's a difference. There are two kinds of prakriti. There's superior prakriti and inferior prakriti. The living entities are superior prakriti because they have consciousness. But there's inferior prakriti which does not have consciousness. Hmm. Understood. So the material nature is the inferior prakriti, and the living entity is the superior. Yes, the inferior prakriti means earth, water, fire, air, and ether. These things. This is the inferior prakriti, and the mind, the intelligence, ego also is there. This is the inferior prakriti. Clear, Gurudev. Very clear now. Thank you. One question from Chaya Madhuri Gurudev. Yes. Chaya Madhuri. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Chaya. Namaste. Ah, Ajna Pai Hai, no na ka. Pi mi kham song sai wa. Nembe ah, tuk do min yaan ya ha. Ma ja Krishna. Ta wa ne. แล้วก็ทุกตัวมีญาณเนี่ยมาเกิดในในโลกวัตถุทีเนี้ยในโลกวัตถุเนี่ยมีทั้งความบาปตัณหาแล้วก็วิชาพี่ก็เลยมีความสงสัยว่าทําไมดวงวิญญาณถึงไม่อยู่กับปริชนาทําไมเราถึงต้องมาเกิดในโลกนี้ด้วยอะค่ะอยากฟังคําอธิบายจากมหาราชค่ะขอบคุณค่ะฮาริปริชนา question is if if we are from from Come from Krishna or from Goloka Vrindavan. So wh why are we here in this world? Why we have to again come to be under uh, goodness, passion, and ignorance again? Well, we chose. I, we chose. I'm I one minute. Good. Let me ask. Right, my dear. Why are we here in this world? Right, my dear. When we are in this world, right, my dear. ใช่ใช่แล้วพี่ก็สงสัยว่าในเมื่อว่าถ้าโลกเนี้ยมันมันมีความความไม่ดีมีความบาปอะไรอย่างเงี้ยพี่ก็เลยสงสัยเพิ่มว่าเหมือนทําไมเราถึงต้องมาโลกนี้แล้วปิชนาทําไมถึงสร้างโลกนี้เอาไว้ทําไมอะไรเงี้ยเข้าใจพี่ไหมโอเคโอเคโอเคครับ so if we are happily with their living with Krishna then why why Krishna have to create this material world the world of misery and why we are why we choose to come here When we have a better place to stay. Well, that's our mistake. That we chose to come here because we were envious of Krishna. We didn't want to surrender to Krishna. Hmm. Because we were thinking. Why I should worship Krishna? I should be Krishna. I should I should be Bhagavan. Krishna 
So Krishna gives us that independence that we can choose where we want to be. We want to be with Him or we want to be away from Him. He gives us the free will. He doesn't force us. Just like if the man comes to the woman and says, you love me. And the woman said, no, I don't want to love you. And the man said, no, you have to love me or else I'll beat you. So that is not real love if you have to force someone to love you. So Krishna wants real love. He wants pure love. He doesn't want to force you, he doesn't want to beat you to love him. So we have that choice. We chose to come. There are many more souls in the spiritual world. We are only the few people here in the material world. Most of the souls are in the spiritual world. So you can't blame Krishna. It's our mistake. We chose to come here. Mm -hmm. มีคําถามเพิ่มได้มั้ยคะเห็นเช่นอย่างบางคนบอกว่าบางคนอ่ะค่ะเหมือนกับว่าเค้าอาจจะรักคริชนาตั้งแต่เกิดอะไรอย่
and then death is the examination. Just like you study at school, and sometimes you study, sometimes you fail the exam, you have to do the year again, you have to repeat, you have to take the exam again. So the same way we study, we're here in this material world, we have the body, and at time of death, we have the exam. We have to remember Krishna, we have to not think about material enjoyment. And then if we think of Krishna, then we can go back to be with Krishna. But if you're thinking about your dog, you have a dog and you're thinking about your dog at the time of death, next life you may become a dog. Or if the woman is thinking about the man at the time of death, next life she becomes a man. When the man is thinking about the woman at the time of death, it becomes a woman. So whatever we remember at the end of life, it will determine the next life. We have to prepare ourselves, we have to practice, we have to get free from material desire. So this is, the human life is the opportunity to get perfection. You don't have to come back again. So it's possible. We just have to practice. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Guru Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Prabhu Ji, my question is, Prabhuji's question is, uh, you said that there are two types of Prakriti. We understand that Prakriti is actually female, but even in the feminine, um, and even in the feminine energy, there are two. We have male and female. So how do we understand that? Yes. Actually, there's one male. The one male is the Ishwara. Ishwara is the real Purusha. All the others are fem feminine. The Ekala Ishwara Krishna or Sabritya. So we're thinking male and female. That is our bodily conception because we're identifying with the body. We're thinking I'm a man or we're thinking I'm a woman. But actually our position is servant. We're all servants. We're all feminine in relation to Krishna, to who, the Ishwara, who is the Purusha. He's the real male. Uh, 
ผู้หญิงใช่ไหมครับแล้วตรงนี้เนี่ยเราจะเข้าใจได้ไงในเมื่อเราแบ่งปากเกตีออกเป็นสองอย่างอ่าแล้วบุมาก็บอกว่าความจริงเนี่ยมีทั้งส่วนที่เป็นหญิงแล้วก็ชา We identify this body. We're thinking, I am a woman, or some is thinking, I am a man. And we, but this is the body. In the spiritual platform, we're all souls, and we're all feminine in relation to Krishna. Krishna is the male, and we are all feminine in relation to him. We are all meant for his service. เรื่องความจริงเนี่ยในเพศในการแบ่งเพศนะคะว่าเป็นผู้หญิงเป็นผู้ชายเนี่ยมันมีขึ้นแค่จากมุมมองทางวัตถุนี้เท่านั้นซึ่งความจริงในโลกทิพย์เนี่ยจะไม่มีเพศเลยเพราะว่าทุกดวงวิญญาณคือเป็นเหมือนกับเป็นเพศเดียวกันหมดนะคะไม่มีแบ่งชายแบ่งหญิงอะไรมีแค่มีแค่กฤษณาเท่านั้นนะคะที่เป็นชายส่วนทุกชีวิตเนี่ยมายไว้เพื่อความสุขของพระองค์ So we are Krishna's energy. We are the prakriti. I said, yes. But you're you're saying that within the prakriti there's the male and female. That's in the terms of the material body. That is the conditioned state consciousness. อันนั้นนะคะที่เราเข้าใจว่าปรากฏการเนี่ยเป็นเป็นผู้หญิงหรือว่าเป็นผู้ชายเนี่ยอันนั้นเนี่ยมันเป็นระดับของวัตถุที่เราใช้ในการแล้วกันเข้าใจแบบวัตถุเท่านั้นแต่ความจริงเนี่ยในสภาวะทิพย์เนี่ยจะไม่มีการแบ่งว่าเป็นหญิงหรือชาย You may be female this life previous life you were a man now you're a man and the man's got the the male body previous life maybe he was a woman or next life he's going to be a woman ผู้ชายนะคะที่ได้รับลางผู้หญิงอยู่ในปัจจุบันอาจจะชาติที่เราเป็นผู้ชายมาก่อนยึดติดกับผู้หญิงมากทำให้ชาตินี้เป็นผู้หญิงอะไรอย่างเงี้ยชาติหน้าของเราก็เราไม่รู้แล้วชาตินี้เป็นผู้ชายอยู่ชาติหน้าอาจจะเป็นผู้หญิง The body is only the dress. It's the dress, the covering of the soul. We're talking about the soul. ร่างกับวัตถุเนี่ยมันเป็นแค่มันเป็นแค่สิ่งที่ดวงวิญญาณเราอาศัยอยู่เท่านั้น So the position of the soul is to be the servant. Krishna is the male; we are all the female. Ma material world, you're thinking I'm the male; she's my wife. Her duty is to serve me. You're thinking you're God. You're thinking your wife is your servant. That's illusion. That's Maya. In the world of the world, when we are a woman, we are married, and we think, "Oh, the husband is the one who takes care of me. He is the one who takes care of me. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. I am the one who takes care of him. Is also a soul. She's also serve, meant to serve Krishna. She's not your servant. She's a servant of Krishna. So we have to get free from the bodily illusion. We have to come to the platform of. Con pure consciousness. Understand, I'm not the body. I'm a soul, and my soul is a servant of Krishna. Do you understand now? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. All right. So, is everybody going to come for the safari tomorrow night? Six. Six. Six o'clock to eight o'clock. 
India time. Aina different India, ta India time, 6 to 8. 6 to 8. So Thai time, 7.30 to 9.30. Oh. Bangkok time, 7.30 to 9.30. Okay. Yeah, you don't have the link? Okay, I'll, I'll give you the link. The, pass, the password is Safari, small letters, S-A-F-A-R-I. -A 